Let's see how a depth first search, or DFS, algorithm works in a graph. Here we have this graph, and the corresponding adjacency list showing how each node connects to others. Our goal is to explore it using DFS. We'll start with the recursive approach first. On the right, we have this recursion stack, which helps us keep track of where we are in the search as we go deeper into each path. Let's begin DFS from node A and see how we move from one node to the next. First, we'll print node A to mark the start of our DFS journey. Now we need to move to one of its neighbors. Since A has two neighbors, which one should we visit first? The order depends on how the nodes are stored in the adjacency list. In our case, node B appears before node C, so we'll follow that order and proceed to node B. Now, node B also has two neighbors, but since we've already visited A, we'll move on to the next neighbor, which is G. Node G also has two unvisited neighbors. According to the order in the adjacency list, node F comes first, so we'll proceed to F from here. Now looking at node F, we see that node C comes before node E in its adjacency list. So, our next move will be to visit node C. Now that all the neighbors of node C have been visited, the algorithm will backtrack from here. We'll return to node F and move to its other neighbor, which is node E. From node E, the algorithm will move to its only unvisited neighbor, which is node D. Now, since node D has no unvisited neighbors, the algorithm will begin backtracking from here, checking for any unvisited nodes as it retraces its steps. Now, let's take a look at the code for this recursive version of DFS. First, we'll store the graph as an adjacency list, using a dictionary where each node points to a list of its neighbors. Next, we'll define the DFS function, which takes three input parameters, the graph, the starting vertex, and a set called visited to keep track of nodes we've already visited. In this function, we add the current vertex to the visited set and print it to show our progress. Then, for each neighbor of the current vertex, we check if it's already visited. If it's unvisited, we recursively call DFS on that neighbor, continuing our deep exploration. The time complexity of this DFS algorithm is big O of n plus e, where n is the number of nodes and e is the number of edges. This complexity arises because the algorithm visits each node once and, for each node, checks all its connected edges. Thus, we account for both nodes and edges in the overall complexity. The space complexity of this DFS algorithm is big O of n, where n is the number of nodes. This is due to the recursive call stack, which, in the worst case, can go as deep as the number of nodes if the graph is skewed like a single path. Additionally, the visited set also requires O of n space to store each node once as it's visited, now, let's explore the iterative version of the DFS algorithm. First, we initialize an empty set to keep track of nodes we've already explored, and an explicit stack to manage the traversal. Initially, this stack will contain just the starting node, A. Next, we'll pop the top element from the stack and check if it's already visited by looking it up in the visited set. If it hasn't been visited, we'll add it to the set, print it, and mark it in orange to visually track the traversal. Now, this node has two neighbors, so we'll check its adjacency list. Here, the neighbors appear in the order B and C. However, we'll push them onto the stack in reverse order, first C, then B. This is because the stack follows a last in first out order. By pushing node B last, it will be the first to be processed, maintaining the correct traversal sequence. Next, Node B is popped from the stack. Since it's not in the visited set, we'll add it, print it, and mark it in orange to show our traversal. Now, we'll look at B's neighbors. A is already visited, so we'll skip it and push G onto the stack. Now we'll pop G from the stack, add it to the visited set, print it, and mark it in orange. Now, 
G has two unvisited neighbors. We'll push them onto the stack in reverse order, as usual, to maintain the correct traversal sequence. Now, we'll pop node F from the stack, add it to the visited set, print it, and mark it in orange. Next, node F has two unvisited neighbors, C and E. As before, we'll push them onto the stack in reverse order, so E goes first, followed by C. Now, we'll pop node C from the stack, as it is not in the visited set. We will add it to the visited set, print it, and mark it in orange. Now, since node C has no unvisited neighbors, we'll pop the next element from the stack, which is node E. Since E isn't in the visited set, we'll add it there, print it, and mark it in orange. Now node E has an unvisited neighbor, D, so we'll push D onto the stack. Now, as usual, we'll pop the top element from the stack, which is D. Since D isn't in the visited set, we'll add it, print it, and mark it in orange. Now, node D has no unvisited neighbors, so we'll pop the stack. The popped element is C, but since C has already been visited, we'll skip it and pop the stack again. Once again, we get C, so we skip it. Now that the stack is empty, the algorithm stops here. Now, let's take a look at the code for this iterative DFS method. First, we define the function, which takes two input parameters, the graph and the start node. Inside, we initialize an empty set to track explored nodes and a stack that begins with the starting node. Then, we enter a while loop that will continue running as long as there are elements in the stack. Inside the loop, we pop the top element from the stack, which gives us the current node to process. If this node hasn't been visited yet, we add it to the visited set, print it, and mark it for traversal. After that, we look at its neighbors in the adjacency list. To maintain the correct order, we push each unvisited neighbor onto the stack in reverse order. This ensures we process them in the desired sequence when popped. For all the code used in this video, be sure to check out the GitHub link provided in the description box. The time complexity for this iterative approach remains big O of n plus e, where n is the number of nodes and e is the number of edges. The space requirement is big O of n as we use a visited set and an explicit stack to store nodes.